good? Okay. How many of you guys have done a group presentation in school or a group project? Okay, so hopefully that was a good experience. Was it a good experience? Yes? A few of you? Okay, that's good. So you guys are going to be doing a group presentation in this class. You guys will all get separate grades for it. That's what most people are concerned about. So you won't be graded as a group. You will be graded separately. So that should ease some of your worries. Now with this group, or with this group presentation, what you're going to be doing is teaching us about certain textbook chapters. And what I'll be, <laughs> what I will be um, showing you guys, or what I'll be doing with you guys next time, is I'll be splitting you up into groups so that you know which chapters you will be discussing with the class. So what you're going to have in the group presentation, you're going to have a game, just one game per group. You are also going to have some videos, which is really fun. Some can be speech tip videos, they can be TED Talks. Who here has heard of TED Talks? Wow, a lot of you. Okay, we'll talk about those more later. Um, you can also show us some bad speeches, some clips from TV shows or movies that showed miscommunication or whatever communication term you want to be uh, representing. You will also use PowerPoint, like I'm doing here. And if you don't have PowerPoint or don't want to use PowerPoint, you can also use Prezi or Google Slides, whatever works best for you. You will also have a discussion session with the class or a Q&A, question and answer session. Okay, so that's it for the requirements. Now I'm going to go into detail with those. So as far as the game goes, the game could be tic-tac-toe, it could be hangman, it can be Jeopardy. A lot of people, who's familiar with Jeopardy? Okay, so it's, uh, they have a lot of Jeopardy games online that you can set up with whatever questions you want. So you can look at some of those sites and set up a Jeopardy game if you want to. A lot of groups have a really fun time setting up Jeopardy to the group presentation. So your game can be anywhere from two to 15 minutes. The key thing to remember here is that your group presentation will be 30 to 45 minutes long. So keep in mind how long the game is going to take, how long your discussion session is going to take, how long you're going to be speaking for, um, let's see what else is here, how long your videos are going to be. So keep all that in mind as a group as you're preparing. If you decide to do Jeopardy, Jeopardy takes usually about 20 to 25 minutes. That means all of you are going to have smaller speaking parts, which most people are very okay with. Or if you just want to do hangman or a word search, those normally take about two minutes. So you guys might have very long speaking parts or very long video clips. So keep all that in mind as you're preparing in your groups. And again, I'll split you up into those groups next class. Another thing is when you are doing your game, you need to be enthusiastic. When you are lecturing to the class during this group presentation, you need to be enthusiastic just with any other speech. As far as your videos go, those need to be somewhere between 10 and 20 minutes during the group presentation. A lot of people, and I think this is a good idea, a lot of people choose to show a video maybe every five minutes. Um, and the video clips are normally around three minutes long. And what you're going to do after you show that video clip or beforehand is explain how that video ties into the content that you've been teaching to the class. So make sure it relates and make sure it is enjoyable and valuable for the class. That's really important. So again, you can show movie clips, TED Talks, you can show some good presidential speeches, some bad presidential speeches, and there are a ton of speech tip videos out there that you can use that are really great and squeeze a lot of valuable information into three to five minutes. Search YouTube, you will not be at a loss for speech videos. And again, make sure they're useful, appropriate, and enjoyable, and explain why the video relates. I did have, I, I've had some students show some really crazy videos, and I thought, okay, let's see what the explanation is. And usually the explanation's really good, and I think, wow, they really tied that into the material well, and that's very memorable, and the class is never going to forget that. I have also had some people, are you guys familiar with the Old Spice commercials? Let's yeah. Know. Okay, you know how crazy they are? I had a student show one of those, and then afterward I thought, I wonder how he's going to explain that, and he didn't. He just moved on to the next person, and I thought, oh, okay, we just showed an Old Spice commercial for absolutely no reason. So make sure that you explain it, tie it in somehow to the material, otherwise it's just a waste of time. When you use your PowerPoint, make sure that you're not overloading the class with text. You don't want 
five pictures and you know paragraphs of text over here. You want to make sure that there's a good balance. You'll notice on this slide, I follow what's called the six by six rule. They'll mention that in your textbook. It's mentioned in probably every speech textbook. Sometimes they call it the seven by seven rule. All that means is that you are going to have six to seven words going across the screen and six to seven lines of content going down the screen. So that's a general rule you should follow. Don't worry yourself about following it to the T. It doesn't have, don't say, oh my gosh, I have eight words. How do I cut out one word? Don't worry about it in that way. It's just a general guideline. And maybe have one or two pictures on a slide. For your, oh, and also for your PowerPoint, 10 to 20 slides per group is plenty. As a, as a group member, if you just want to do two slides and everyone else wants to do two slides, I'm absolutely okay with that. Don't spend your whole life on PowerPoint. It's just a guide for you and for the audience. For your discussion, my recommendation is to ask the class true and false questions or multiple choice questions. And you can put those in a PowerPoint um, slide so that the class can see if they, if they didn't hear you properly, they can at least see what the choices are. Don't ask them open-ended questions because a lot of times they're just gonna stare at you. So make sure you give them options. That way they can at least yell out some answers and it makes it a little more interactive and a little more fun. Again, be enthusiastic, and I say candy is very helpful. That's why there's a picture of candy here. You don't have to bring in candy. I will bring in candy that looks just like this. It actually is not the best candy. It's from the dollar store. So if you guys want to bring in better candy, that's great, but you absolutely do not have to. Actually, I do have some better candy. I have little packets of M&Ms and stuff, so I'll bring those in if all else fails. So candy's a good idea. When people get an answer right, you toss out some candy to them you'll see people start writing notes very excitedly because they want that candy. They want to remember the information you're teaching them so they can get that candy. So it's, it's a good idea to bring that in to get the class a little more interactive. As far as your delivery goes, just like any other speech, you've got to be dynamic, enthusiastic, make that eye contact, make sure that you're using engaging movements and gestures. And then again, when you speak, it'll be shorter or longer, depending on time spent with other activities. Speak for a minimum of two minutes a piece, a minimum. I have some group members who kind of stay behind the computer the whole time and they never speak once. And then they have to do their group presentation alone the next class period. And that's a lot more pressure. So speak for at least two minutes while you're up here with your group. As far as your overall content and organization goes, Make sure that it's organized, that the class can follow it easily. You also want to make sure that you don't curse and you don't use slang, like I said in the other speech. It needs to be well developed. Make sure that you do reference page numbers while you're going over the material, just so I can follow along and so the other students can follow along. And then make sure it is useful and enjoyable for them. Keep them with you. Make sure it's engaging. This is why there are so many components. You need to make sure that you're switching things up. What I see a lot of students do is they will have, let's see, oh, so this is why we have videos, we have discussions. I see one student get up and they say, hi, my name is Bob. I'm gonna be talking to you guys about this chapter, this portion of this chapter. They maybe have two PowerPoint slides. They explain that information. They ask the class maybe three questions. They show a video for maybe three minutes and then they explain how that video relates to the material. And then Sue gets, or you all will be standing up here, but then Sue starts presenting. She says, thank you, Bob. Okay, I'm Sue. I am going to be presenting this portion of this chapter. Um, and then she goes over her two PowerPoint slides. She talks for two to five minutes. She asks the class a few questions, maybe two or three, maybe more than that. And then she shows a video. Maybe the video is three minutes long. She talks about that video and so forth. So everyone kind of does the exact same thing. That's just the easiest way I have seen students do it. And then maybe at the end they play a game because you do need to have one game. So that's just a good way to keep switching it up. Make sure there's variety so that no one gets bored with any one thing that you are doing. I think we have two slides left. Make sure you showed practice, that you have practiced this out loud, at least your own portion. Make sure you practice out loud and met the requirements. If you guys look at that front page of the group presentation packet, there is a long list of requirements, but if you use that as a checklist, 
you'll be good to go. Just make sure that as you're preparing, each one of those criteria is taken care of, and you'll most likely get an A or B on the presentation. The major thing I see happen is people forget that there's a presentation guide and there's a sample in that packet for you. All it is is a walkthrough, just a really brief bulleted um, walkthrough of what you're going to be doing in the presentation. And then they forget to print out their slides. So print out those two things, otherwise you'll miss 10 points. I think each of them is worth five points apiece, according to the checklist. On group presentation day, you will take a few minutes to set up. I suggest getting here early, maybe five minutes early. I will help you set up your PowerPoints. I will help you set up your videos to make sure they're all running properly so we won't have any technical difficulties. Um, I'll help you guys learn how the computer works, how to use the mouse, um, or this little guy, if you want to use it. You, the entire group is going to be up here together. You'll all be standing here together. There will probably be a few people over here, a few people over there. And then one group member will be at the computer clicking, moving back and forth through the lecture slides while someone's up here speaking. And then when they speak, someone else will take over for them. This is your last slide here. Your presentation will be 30 to 45 minutes. You need to make sure each group member gets the opportunity to speak. It's not necessarily your responsibility, bless you. but if you see someone kind of hiding in the background, they don't want to do a part, suggest that they do it, because otherwise they'll have to do it by themselves. This is one of the most important bullet points in this lecture. You need to include PowerPoint or Prezi, lecture portion, which is where you talk, your games, one game uh, minimum, videos that are applicable, valuable, and um, are in accordance with the textbook. Q&A, so that little discussion, and then the two required printouts that I mentioned in the last slide. Mix it up with videos and games to keep everybody engaged. Make it informative, enjoyable, and valuable. And then again, like I normally say, relax. I know it's a lot of information, but once most people get started working on the group presentation, they realize it's really not as big of a deal as they thought it was. All those components are really just to make the class more engaged. Um, and if you use that evaluation form as a checklist, it'll really kind of lower the stress level. So relax and enjoy preparing the presentation with your groups because you guys are going to really enjoy it while you're up here. It's a lot of fun.